Welcome back. We're in the book of Exodus. We're working through verse by verse through all the chapters. And we've come to a section here where we're going to shift the genre from uh, narrative style. And now there's a sudden shift to genealogy. It's kind of like weird. What's it doing here? We're looking at Exodus chapter 6, verses 14 to 27. Now, if I took the time to read those like we usually do each morning, we would have no time left except to say goodbye. See you next time. So I'm going to, this time I'm going to do something different. I'm going to encourage you to read this section verses 14 to 27 on your own. I'm just going to add, throw a few comments out there on it that might uh, might be useful as we think about this. So to us, this kind of like maybe seems like a weird place. I mean, like, boom, why are we suddenly dropping uh, a, a genealogy into the text right here? But this is a kind of a break between the first part of the book of Exodus and the second part. And we drop into this genealogy and this is, uh, you know, things are kind of depressing right up to this. If you saw yesterday morning, uh, yeah, things aren't moving. Pharaoh's unhappy and everybody's unhappy and, and nobody's delivered. So look at your text. If you have it open in front of you, look at verse 14 and verse 25. There's a, there's a little thing here that we call an inclusio, just a fancy theological word. You can throw it away, but uh, you'll notice it at verse 14. These are the heads of their father's households, da, 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 da. And if you go down to verse 25, or at the end it says, these are the heads of the father's households. This is kind of a bracket. It kind of brackets the whole, most of the genealogy right there in between verse 14 and verse 25. And that's kind of a, a signal in the text, kind of a marker that shows you, okay, we're, we're, we're jumping off here into genealogy. So just kind of a, kind of a shift in direction. So right here, we're introduced to a several generation genealogy. And you might say, so yeah, what is this, like a genealogy of Moses? Well, yes and no. It's really a lot more of a genealogy of Aaron, Aaron and the Levites. So for example, Aaron, the name of Aaron's wife is mentioned, like Elizabeth, but the name of Moses' wife, Zipporah, what? it's not in there. The name of Aaron's children is mentioned here. The name of Moses' children, like, no, it's not there. Uh, even from Aaron's children comes eventually the descendant Phineas. Where's, uh, so we're going all the way down there because, you know, over there in Numbers, what is it, Numbers 25, 26, Phineas delivers Israel. And that's kind of a high point that's coming up in the book of Numbers. Uh, so this, this is going to be kind of a helper. This spot, this little genealogy helps us toward that. But this shows the Levites uh, more of their genealogy. And there's someone here who's married to a Canaanite woman. Uh, there's a, and there's a connection also to King David. So, uh, so this isn't just... Just a lot of different things going on here. Another thing that you find here is Kohath. In fact, I'm going to just drop in a photograph here I took of one of the commentaries I'm looking at. It shows you kind of this genealogy laid out. And you can see there, right, almost in the center, there is, uh, there's, I say, Korah, not Kohath, Korah. Korah, who leads a rebellion over down there in Numbers, about Numbers 16. So this kind of shows where he fits into the, the Levitical uh, line here and the Hebrew culture of his day. So this is kind of, this genealogy is kind of a stops things in its tracks and we kind of shift gears and we're looking at this and yeah, these are people that are going to come out of Egypt. God's going to bring them on out. Uh, well, Korah's not going to make it. This is more of a genealogy of Aaron. So it's kind of, kind of curious, kind of interesting the way it, it is here. So you know what this brings up? Moses, you know, everybody kind of sees Moses. He's like the hero of the book of Exodus. No, he's not. I mean, yeah, we, we love and appreciate Moses. I see him as Pastor Moses, you know, from my standpoint as a pastor. I could see everything he's doing in a very pastoral line. But really, I'll tell you who the real hero of the book of Exodus is. It's not Aaron. It's, it's, it's not Moses. It's not anybody else except Yahweh, God. God is the hero. The God of heaven and earth. And he's the one, whenever, whenever he acts, that's when things happen. So, uh Moses has got some challenges here. Have you noticed how many times he moans and complains? Now, if you were in his shoes, you might do, and I, I might do a lot worse. But anyway, the hero of Exodus is not Moses, it's Yahweh. It is Jehovah. It is the God of heaven and earth. And we talked about how Jehovah doesn't really work, that, that naming scheme. But anyway, we give honor to God. So anyway, this genealogy gives us kind of a break in the text. It kind of lines us up for some other big events that are going to happen later on in the, in the Torah. And in the years between leaving Egypt and getting into Israel, there's, there's a lot of trouble and things that happen along the way. So important section here, but kind of an important break in the text because this kind of is the break between the first segment where the people aren't delivered, 
but God provides his deliverer. And now we're going to move in, starting, we've got two more of these, and then we get into the first plague. Uh, we're getting now into the second segment in the book of Exodus, where the plagues are going to begin to fall, and God is going to begin to move those, those big wheels. We're going to get things uh, rolling and start getting this deliverance thing happening. But he's got to grow the faith of his people. And so, kind of a little encouraging spot here. God's going to bring most of these people along. And he wants to bring you and I along. I hope that we're ready to let God grow our faith because we're pretty sure we've got to add some more to it. We're, we're weak and wimpy, just as weak and wimpy and argumentative and moaning as, as Moses is sometimes. You and I are. Let's move on to higher ground. God bless you. See you tomorrow morning.